Fonts matter. You'd read, you'll always be mine, differently than, you'll always be mine. Or, you'll always be mine. Or, I will always find you, and I will always find you. Color also matters, as these old Prozac ads show. Different colors are used to express different emotions. The artist used grays and grayish blues for the dead tree in winter and much warmer colors for the live tree after the person starts taking their medication. I'm going to show you how to generate a word cloud, change the font, change the design, and use it to create a graphic that expresses or illustrates the poem. I created two different illustrations for this poem, which is a, a sonnet by Shakespeare um, from Romeo and Juliet when they first kiss. I'm going to go to word clouds Dot com and I'm going to paste the text in and then I'm going to play around with the different fonts and there's a lot of different adjustments here. Try and get as high a resolution image as you can. I just used a rectangular shape. I cut it down to just uh, two colors, a white background and black lettering and I just played around with the different fonts, how large the design would be. I wanted all the words to fit into this the square. Um, so I how tightly packed. Um, just played around with it a lot until I was able to create two or three word clouds that were graphically pleasing to me. Then you just hit file and I saved it as a PNG which is a portable network graphic. And then instead of opening it in Photoshop like we've been doing, I opened it up in Adobe Illustrator. Now the advantage to opening something up in Adobe Illustrator is that when you select all, copy, and paste it into Adobe Photoshop, it is a smart object, which means that it can be enlarged, you can change its shape, and it's not going to become all fuzzy. So I just paste it in the smart object, and right now I'm stretching it out to accommodate the entire page. Uh, I made a document that had uh, 300 pixels per inch and that was about 8 by 10. Um, right now I'm using the Puppet Warp to just play around with reshaping the letters and just warping them to create an interesting design. I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to paste in another layer also from Illustrator, another smart object which I'm going to rasterize. When you rasterize a smart object, you're basically changing it from a vector-based to uh, pixels, which can be very often more easy to manipulate in, in Photoshop. Right now I'm messing around with the blend mode. Um, I tried to multiply, which is a, I'm able to see all the different layers through each other. The other ones that work are overlay, and uh, there's a lot of different filters in there. Just play around with them to see if you can get the look you want. Duplicate the layers. You can warp them. I'm hitting Edit, Transform, Warp. And once I have a, a bunch of colors that I'm interested in, I'm going to go online and I'm going to find a graphic that I like. I'm going to click on Tools, and I'm going to go to Usage Rights, and the other thing that's important is size. So I want large files that are labeled for reuse. So I found this graphic. I like it. I'm going to download it and I'm going to open it again in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm going to select all, copy, and paste it into my Photoshop file as a smart object. This time when I resize it, I have to hit the shift key as I'm resizing it so I don't accidentally distort my couple. And what I'm going to do is I actually uh, inverse the colors and now the couple is um, cut out and the background's black. I just filled the background black and inverse the selection and cut out the couple. Um, and I'm playing around with how the letters look. I've decided I want the word Romeo to be in the, in the male figure and the word Juliet to be in the female figure. 
and there's a few other words that I want visible just to add to the meaning of the design. I'm playing around with that using all the different tools that we've been using, the transform tools. And now in between the two colors, uh, I'm going to put a gradient. So I made a layer, a blank layer. I changed the background and foreground layer and I'm playing around with gradients, which we used earlier this school year. I'm playing around with the colors, just hit image, adjustments, and then hue, saturation, curves. Just playing around with how I want the colors to look. I'm going to save my graphic design, and then I'm going to play around with various uh, colors to see if I can change the emotional feel of the design. This one's a little warmer. Uh, this one's a little too bright. I decided that this one where she's cold on the bottom and warmer towards the top, it's almost like he's approaching her and she's warming up. Now I'm going to find a photograph online and I'm going to use the same, uh, make sure that things are labeled for reuse, make sure that I'm only picking large files. In this case, I want black and white. I'm going to the different tools. And please make sure you don't not take an image that has uh, copyright restrictions on it because that's stealing another person's intellectual property. So I picked this image. I'm going to save it. I'm going to open it again in Illustrator. Select all, copy, paste as a smart object, resize it, hit the shift key while I'm resizing it. And then I'm playing around with the different filters, the overlay, the multiply, and I think what I found was that the one that worked the best was the soft, um, the soft light filter. Some of them, the letters were too intense. Some of them, the images were of the people were too intense. And I wanted to find that right balance. So when I finally found it, I had one sort of design that gave me uh, one level of emotion when I looked at it. And you can compare it to the other design, which I actually hid that layer of the, the silhouette of the male and female figures. So you can tell the difference. I'm just adjusting the color now, playing around with how warm or cool it is. All these things matter um, in the emotional qualities of the design and what feelings you elicit from your audience. Uh, graphic design is a form of communication and as you can see, font and color do matter. The website we used again was wordclouds.com. This is Rachel Winnenberg, the helpful art teacher with another art tech tutorial.